Uh, thank you. It's it really, Dr. Holmes, it's a real honor. Thank you. And I, I really appreciate, Jamie, your work and uh, all of you. And the, the, the reason that we have been pretty successful in international public health is because of activists like you. This is not something Congress takes to naturally. I remember the first time about literally more than 25 years ago, uh, Joanne Carter with Results, Cricket is representing Joanne and I, she's not feeling well, and Cricket and Joanne have worked with our office a lot over the years. Um, I was talking to her and she talked to me about how international to the TB is still a problem around the world. And I, I remember thinking back to 1970 when I was a, a senior in high school and my dad was a general practice physician. I remember we were driving over town of Mansfield, Ohio, where my father's from. My mother is from Mansfield, Georgia, and they met at the Mayflower Hotel after the war. I thought I'd throw that in anyway. But my dad, my dad pointed to this thing called the Beatty Clinic. And he said, that's a TB tuberculosis clinic, but we don't have tuberculosis anymore in, in Mansfield and, around, and mostly around the country. And uh, I, so that's kind of what I just thought for years and years until Joanne and others talked to me about international TB. And that was really early in the stages of multi-drug resistant TB. So I met soon after. I, I remember going to the, the I, I went to um, Haiti with Paul Farmer who, as you know, passed away recently. And then I went to a Moscow prison with, um, with uh, uh, Jim Yong Kim. And I remember we walked in this prison. I had taken college Russian so I could at least talk to the prisoners. And they were in a, in a, a room maybe three times the size of this little riser here. And there were 25 or so people in the room. And I remember walking in and I, um, Jim said, put a mask on, and I did. And I turned around and he didn't have a mask on. And I said, Jim, and he said, he said, I don't want a mask between me and my patients. And um, these were all people that had tuberculosis, probably not drug resistant, but tuberculosis. So when I saw that, so I went to the chairman of the Republican chair of the House Appropriations Committee. And I said, we would like, uh, I, I said, I have an amendment for $10 million for international TB. And he said, that's too much. He said, if you take five, if you accept five, uh, I won't oppose your amendment. So we took the five million that has since, in the last twenty years, grown. Um, help me on this. Uh, cricket grown to three hundred and three hundred seventy-one million. So it was um, it was it was get the foot in the door, and then then we know what's happened with MDRTB, and we know what's happened with XDRTB, and how important this is. But again, none of this would have happened without the activism of so many of you around the world. It's why I was able to work with, with um, Speaker Pelosi on the, on the international, she wasn't speaker at that point, on the International Relations Committee. Um, it's why I introduced the End Neglected Tropical Diseases Act, Dr. Holmes mentioned. It's why I've worked with Senator Young when I came over to the Senate. He came a few years later, worked with him on increasing TB funding, and I, I, you know, I particularly want to recognize the TB Alliance and USAID and NIH and all their partners for their work, especially as you've you've um, come up with new drugs on dealing with drug resistant TB. It's made such a huge difference. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll close with this um, about the importance of advocacy. Every year. Um, I organize six of my colleagues, three Republicans and three Democrats, and we go down to the Senate floor and we read, we break up into seven pieces, Dr. King's letter from the Birmingham jail. And you should know the story. You probably read it in high school, that letter. If you haven't, even if you did, you should read it again. It's beautiful writing and a, obviously a strong message. Dr. King sent this letter out to, to the white moderate ministers in Montgomery who were, um, I'm sorry, in Birmingham, who were, um, uh, who, who, who said to Dr. King, be patient, um, we support you, we support voting rights, but just be patient, just wait. And Dr. King had had it with patience. This was 1963. So in the midst of this letter, the part that I liked the most, Doc, Dr. King said, progress never rolls in on wheels of inevitability. Progress never rolls in on wheels of inevitability. This, this movement on public health would not have happened without your aggressive, um, eager help the way that you do it. And I, I think back in closing to um, back in, the, I remember a, a director at the, in, at, at the CDC named Dr. Jerome Kaplan or Copeland. Kaplan? Do you remember him in the, in the 90s? Dr. Co I think Copeland. Dr. Copeland? Jeffrey Copeland? Copeland. Jeffrey Copeland. Did I say Jerry? Jeffrey Copeland. Okay. Except for his first and last name, having them wrong, I had it right. Um, Dr. Jeffrey Copeland, got it. He, he, I remember he wrote something that it, it's just changed my view about public health. He said, he said um, it, 
People live 30 years longer today than they did X number of years ago. 25 years of those are public health. And it's everything from safe water to, to testing to what we're doing to develop new drugs to making sure people get primary care. And ever since then, I've worn this pen on my lapel. It was given to me at a steelworker rally. It's a depiction of a canary in a birdcage. You know the story, the mine worker took the canary down in the mines. The mine worker had no union strong enough in those days to help him. Didn't have, it had a government that didn't care enough to help him. And so if the canary died from lack of oxygen or toxic gas, the mine worker was on his own. He got out of the mines. And this signifies to me um, public health, that public health lifts all boats. It, to me, it's like the child tax credit. You do things right, everybody in society gains. And we all live longer because of the, the emphasis on public health. We still have never done as well as we should have, but we've made huge, huge progress as these awards tonight show, as your activism shows. So just remember, progress never rolls in on wheels inevitability, and that's who you all are. And I thank you so much.